And if you would turn with me in your Bibles, if you want to follow along, it will also, I think, be put in behind me. Our scripture reading this morning from Genesis chapter 17. And we're going to read the verses 1 to 14. For many, if not maybe even most of us, this will be a very familiar passage as uh, we often turn to Genesis 17 uh, when we are speaking of the covenant that God made with Abraham and especially the sign and seal that was given uh, to Abraham of that covenant, that, was, that sign and seal of circumcision. I want to focus our attention though this morning on the declaration uh, that God makes to Abram before he does this. It's at the very beginning of the passage, and you'll see the title of the sermon is El Shaddai. That's the, the, literally the Hebrew word uh, as God comes to Abraham and says that I am El Shaddai. It's translated for us as God Almighty. And so I want to focus our attention this morning on that declaration that, by the way, is the first time that this happens, that God comes in redemptive history in scripture, this is the first time that we come across in the Bible God making the declaration that he is El Shaddai. And so we want to uh, focus our attention on God's declaration there uh, with our time together this, uh, this morning. So let us read first Genesis chapter 17. I'll begin reading at verse 1. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless. I will confirm my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers. Abram fell face down and said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abram. Your name will be called Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you very fruitful. I will make nations of you and kings will come from you. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you for the generations to come, to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. The whole land of Canaan, where you are now an alien, I will give as an everlasting possession to you and your descendants after you, and I will be their God. Then God said to Abraham, As for you, you must keep my covenant, you and your descendants after you, for the generations to come. This is my covenant with you and your descendants after you, the covenant you are to keep. Every male among you shall be circumcised. You are to undergo circumcision, and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and you. For the generations to come, every male among you who is eight days old must be circumcised, including those born in your household or bought with money from a foreigner, those who are not your offspring. Whether born in your household or bought with your money, they must be circumcised. My covenant is in your flesh is to be an everlasting covenant. Any uncircumcised male who has not been circumcised in the flesh will be cut off from his people. He has, spoke, he has broken my covenant. That is the word of our God. And again, our focus this morning, uh, keeping all of the, the context in, in our minds, of course, uh, God is coming to Abram and he's doing uh, a, a lot of things. <laughs> He's reminding Abraham of his covenant, his promise that I will be your God. He is giving a sign and seal uh, to show that promise that I will be your God and the God of your offspring and ultimately the God of the nations. All promising the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a whole lot going on here in this particular passage. Very significant. It's again why it's again in our circles a fairly well-known passage, often when we think about baptism or whatever it might be, we come back and we think about um, this covenant that God made with Abraham and the sign and seal of that covenant. And I don't want to minimize that at all. But my intention with you this morning as we look at this particular passage is not to get any further uh, than, as I said to you, the declaration that God makes. All of these things are indeed going on, and they're all very significant. But there is something that happens as God comes to Abram, soon to be Abraham, 
And he, he comes to him, and before he sets all of this out, before he, he, God makes these, the, these, the sign and gives the seal and all of those kind of things, changes Abraham's name and all that goes on, he actually comes to Abraham and he says something extremely important to him. And he says something about himself. He comes to Abram and he says, I am El Shaddai. Translated for us here, I am God Almighty. This is the first time that it appears in the scriptures. This is the first time that God makes himself known with this name, El Shaddai. Now as you think about this uh, name, El Shaddai, those of you who might be uh, I'm not sure, but those of you who might be Michael Card fans, uh, he penned a song. Maybe you're hearing the title or seeing the title, El Shaddai, that rings a little a few bells go off. M Michael Card wrote a song called El Shaddai and uh, made popular, I think, most popular by Amy Grant, if that means anything to you. If not, perfectly fine. El Shaddai, it is a declaration that God makes. <clears throat> I am El Shaddai. I am God Almighty. What I want to do this morning is look at this declaration. Look at what God is saying to us that he is El Shaddai. That he is God Almighty. In a very simple structure, I think you can see there, I want to deal with, firstly, as we think about the, the implications here. We need to understand what it is that God is saying about himself. When God makes declaration about his name, I am, and then we fill in the blank, he is saying something about himself. So what is it that he's saying? We want to look at the term uh, El Shaddai. What does it mean? And then we want to notice there again in this verse that we're looking at, verse 1 of chapter 17, is there's a call of this El Shaddai. And so we'll look at El Shaddai, what does it mean? And then God makes a call. He calls, I am God Almighty. And then he says, walk before me and be blameless. And so we're going to start by looking at El Shaddai, and then we're going to look at the call of El Shaddai. That's our structure this morning. Again, anytime that God says something about himself, anytime we come across the words, I am, whether they are by themselves, right, Moses in the burning bush, I am who I am, or whether it is here as God comes to Abram and says, I am, and then says something else. Anytime that God says, I am, we must sit up and take notice. God is saying something about himself. Here, God comes to Abram and he makes declaration that I am El Shaddai. What does that mean? Why does God reveal himself this way at this particular time. Well, the phrase El Shaddai, El is easy. Uh, that's simply the Hebrew word, the, the most generic word for God. El, anytime you come across that, it is the word for God. And it's very easy, there's no problem translating it. Uh, El, God. The word Shaddai, though, uh, is a little bit more difficult. It's a little bit more nuanced in terms of what it means. It certainly speaks of God's power. There's no question about it, and that's why most modern translations will, will indeed translate it the very way that we have it translated for us this morning. El, God, Almighty, Shaddai. It most certainly speaks of, his, of God's power. We have to have in our minds as we think about this term, what God is coming to Abram and saying to him, I am a God who is all-powerful. That's true. He's coming to Abram and he's saying, I'm a God who can actually do whatever it is I want. There is no, there, there is no ability uh, lacking in me to do what I want. I am all-powerful. I can do what I want and I can do how, uh, how, how it is I want to do it. I can do when I want to do it. He's God. It is a, it is a statement of, of power. El Shaddai. If you're thinking about the attributes of God, um, maybe it's already come to your mind, omnipotence, right? Omni, all, potent, power. God's omnipotence. He's all-powerful. Shaddai takes us in that direction. Absolutely. It speaks to us of his of power, his ability. 
to do that which he promises to do. But there is another nuance to it. And again, it, it, it is important for us to kind of pick up on this. It speaks also, in the context of his power, it speaks also of God being in and of himself sufficient for all things. It's not just raw power. It is the fact that he, he himself, God himself, is all sufficient for whatever it is that he is going to do. He himself is all sufficient. In, in older translations, you'll actually find the, the words El Shaddai being translated that way. I am God all sufficient. And we don't say that's a wrong translation. What it is is that they're trying to come to grips with what God is saying here. He is all powerful. He is able to do that which he desires to do. But he himself, in and of himself, is all sufficient. Now, this is important, extremely important, as we think about what God is doing when he is doing it. He's come to Abram, soon to change his name to Abraham. He's bringing before Abram his covenant promises. If you were to flip back, you don't need to, but if you were to flip back a couple of chapters, Genesis chapter 15, verse 1, it is God who comes to Abram and he says, I am your shield. I am your very great reward. I am your shield. I am also me myself as God is your very great reward. You remember ultimately what God says to Abraham, I will be your God. And I will be the God of your offspring, and I will be the God of the nations in and through the promise that I am making to you. I will be your God. He is giving himself. It's the essence of what God is promising. I am going to give you me. I am going to be your God, and I will be your very great reward. Here in Genesis 17, God comes to Abram again, and he reiterates this very promise. He reminds Abram of that promise, of what he had said to him. And he comes, and the first thing he says to Abram, you remember the promise that I made, I will be your God, I will be your very great reward. I am El Shaddai. I am one who is powerful enough to bring that about, but after all, it is, I promised myself to you, I am sufficient in and of myself, to be your very great reward. He comes to Abraham and he makes a statement about himself that I am El Shaddai. I am God Almighty. I am God All-Sufficient. Everything that I have promised to you, I am able to give to you. I will be a blessing to you. And I will be a blessing to your offspring and I will be a blessing to the nations in and through what I'm promising here. And so you see, El Shaddai, we don't want to just go the raw power route. God can do whatever he wants and keep it disassociated. It is God who says, I'm promising myself and I can do it. I am El Shaddai. He is a God who is not only able to bring us to a state of true blessing, but he is also able to bring us to himself, who is all blessedness. I am El Shaddai. And it's fascinating to trace the Old Testament use of this name of God. This is the first time we come across it. And then you kind of work through how it is used in the Old Testament. I'm not going to go through all of those, uh, those instances but it is used in the same way. When God comes to, uh, or, or when I, Isaac blesses Jacob, right? Covenant blessings, passing on the covenant blessings. And, and you have there Isaac blessing Jacob in Genesis chapter 28. He reminds him of this promise, right? Be fruitful and multiply. I will be a God, I will be a blessing to you and to your offspring and ultimately to the nations. All of that is coming back there as as the, the blessings are passed along. 
But when they are passed along, God reveals himself again as El Shaddai. Don't forget that I am able to do this. You find it again, Genesis chapter 35, when God renames Jacob. Your name will no longer be Jacob, it is going to be Israel. And I am your, going to be your God, and I am the God of your offspring, and I am going to be the God of the nations. Through what I am promised, but God comes at that point and he says, I am El Shaddai. Don't forget that I am a God who can do this. Now God continually reminds us, it's not just for Abram, for Isaac, for Jacob. God here this morning is reminding us that he is El Shaddai. God never changes. He comes to us this morning and he reminds us that I am God Almighty. I am God all-sufficient to do all that I have promised. And ultimately, as we remember what it is that he has promised, it warms our heart, I trust, that God has said to us that I will be your God, and I will be the God of your offspring, and I will be the God of the nations. The essence of that promise, of course, as we will see in a few minutes, is, the, is Jesus Christ himself. But he comes to us and he says, I am El Shaddai. I am the one who is the blessing, and I am the one who can bring you to that state of blessing. There is a lesson to be learned before we go any further. There is a lesson for us to be learned here. When we think of blessing, right here caught in God's covenant promises, when we think of blessing, we must think of God as the ultimate blessing. So often, and it just happens, so often we disassociate blessing and blessedness from God himself. And so God is a conduit. He's a means, right? So God is going to give me what I think is going to be a blessing. And so we come to God and we say, God, can you give me whatever this is? Would you bless me in this way, whatever that is? And God is, is a conduit. He's going to bring us to a blessing. And there's no doubt that God does bless us in that way, in so many different ways. I would call that a small b blessing. It is God who provides from rain and everything else. It's God who gives. But this reminds us ultimately that God is not first and foremost one who brings us into a state of, blessed, of, of giving us blessing. It's not a God that is, as some have said, a cosmic vending machine, right? We, we put our, our requests in, God, would you please? And we put our requests in and out the bottom comes what we ask for and, and that, that is the blessing. Whatever comes out the bottom is the blessing. This reminds us something far more fundamentally true. God comes to Abram he reminds Isaac and Jacob, he reminds us this morning, I am your blessing. It's not just what I give, that I give myself to you, that I am the blessing. It's bound up in this term, El Shaddai, I am all sufficient, find your sufficiency in me. True, I am the one who is going to provide for you, Pray for your bread. But I am ultimately blessedness itself, and I'm promising myself to you. And so it's a reminder to us this morning as we think about the Christian life, as we think about walking before the Lord, that he is our blessedness. He is El Shaddai. He is the one who is all-sufficient. And he is able to bring us to that blessedness. So it's just a corrective to our thinking. But so often we speak of blessing and it stops there from whatever comes out the bottom of the vending machine. But God is, is saying something far more profound to us this morning. Don't forget that I've promised myself to you. And we are reminded of that, of course, as we come then to the call. That's El Shaddai, what, what God is saying. I am El Shaddai, God Almighty, God All-Sufficient. But he gives a call. 
it's, it's couched very clearly. He, he makes that declaration, I am God Almighty. But then he says to Abram, walk before me and be blameless. Walk before me and be blameless. There is a call immediately attached to his statement that I am God all-sufficient or almighty. As we've seen, God just revealed himself to Abram. He reminded him of covenant promises that he is the sufficient one. Here he is telling Abram, avail yourself of me. I'm not just making this statement for the sake of making this statement. I am saying something to you, Abraham. Abram, soon to be Abraham. I am saying this to you. I am truly all-sufficient. I am truly almighty. You will find these things in me. Walk before me. Walk in me. Walk in my grace. Walk in my glory. Walk in my sufficiency. And be blameless. Walk uprightly. I will provide everything you need because I am El Shaddai. It is a call not just to be able to articulate God as El Shaddai. It is a call to experience him as El Shaddai. Walk before me and be blameless. Walk in me and be blameless. You see, we cannot, we must not get these two things reversed. It's very common. It's a very common error of our our human hearts. And it doesn't matter what age we're in. It doesn't matter, uh, you know, what time period we're in in history. It is something that our hearts get reversed very quickly. God does not say to Abraham, be blameless, and then you can walk before me. That's not what God says. He does not say to Abraham, clean yourself up, and then you can walk before me. What he says to Abraham is, walk before me. I am all sufficient. I am all that you need for everything. Walk before me and be blameless. So often we reverse these things in our minds and we suffer miserably for it. We dare not go to God because we struggle, because we're struggling with something, because we're struggling with sin, because we have done that again. And I'm not going to go to God because whether we're embarrassed to go to God, ashamed to go to God, whatever it is, I'm not going to go to God until that's rectified. I'm going to try harder, I'm going to do things differently, and then maybe once things get a little better, then I will go to God. We seek to be blameless before we walk with God. That is to undermine the whole promise that God has given. God says, I am El Shaddai, I am all sufficient, I am all that you need for everything. I am El Shaddai. Walk before me. Walk in my presence. Walk in my grace, in my mercy. And be blameless. It's interesting that of the 48 occurrences of El Shaddai in the Old Testament, I've mentioned just two of them, but there are 48 of them. The book of Job, I found this fascinating. The book of Job uses this name for God 31 times. 31 of 48, I would not have called that. Almost 65% of the times that God reveals himself specifically as El Shaddai. It's in the book of Job. Now, I'm not about to go through the whole book of Job, but there's a lesson there. As we think about the book of Job, the first 37 chapters, Job and his friends what they're doing is arguing about God. You just, you open the book of Job, you know what I'm talking about if you've read the book. They're arguing about God. What is God like? What does God require? No, God wants this. No, God wants this. No, God is this way. No, God is this way. It's this huge, you know, 37 chapter battle royal of theology back and forth. I disagree with you. You're wrong. You're right. You, You get it. Book of Job, first 37 chapters. 
You come to the end of that book and, and God says, finally, enough. Enough noise, enough. Enough of all the arguments about who you think I am and who you think I am and who you think I am and enough of all your disagreements about all of these things. Chapter 40, God says, let me set things straight for you. Let me set things straight for you. Shall a fault finder contend with El Shaddai? He comes and he says, are you really going to argue, nitpick? I'm coming before you as the one who is God Almighty, God All-Sufficient. I am the one that you're talking about actually. He says, he who argues with God, let him answer it. Not just this bickering about things here. It is coming before God who is all-sufficient. And Job listens. As God says, were you there at the beginning when I laid the foundations of the earth? Were you there? Were you there? Were you there? God revealing his sufficiency, his almighty reality, his, his El Shaddai. Job had come into the presence of El Shaddai. And he is undone. He is undone. He finally begins to see things as they truly are. And in chapter 42, then Job replied to the Lord, after the Lord had set things straight, as, he, as God put El Shaddai in front of him, Job replies to the Lord, I know that you can do all things. No plan of yours can be thwarted. You see, he's getting a taste of El Shaddai. You asked, who is it that obscures my counsel without knowledge? Surely. I spoke of things I did not understand, things too wonderful for me to know. You said, listen now, and I will speak. I will question you, and you shall answer me. He's humbled before El Shaddai. And then we have these profound words. It's Job 42, verses 5 and 6. My ears, Job says, my ears had heard of you. I listened, I heard all kinds of the debates and the issues, and my, my ear has heard of you. But now my eyes have seen you. Not just a bunch of, of talk. Now my eyes have truly seen El Shaddai, God all sufficient. And he's, he responds, Therefore I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. As Job came into the presence of, all, of El Shaddai, Job came into his presence, his eyes have now seen him. Walk before me and be blameless. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. This is the call. Here we've been looking at the Old Testament. This is the call of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I said we were going to tie all this up here. Of course we will. It's the essence of the promise that God gave to Abram. It's the essence of what Job saw. It's the promise of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're not looking through the Old Testament lens anymore. We live in the New Testament day. El Shaddai, God all-sufficient. Who is the person of Jesus Christ but God incarnate? God in the flesh. El, El Shaddai in the flesh. That is who Jesus is. And Jesus says to us this morning in, in, in full clarity, walk before me, walk in me, walk in my grace, walk in my mercy, and be blameless. Jesus Christ, certainly the fulfillment of all the promises made to Abraham. And as soon as you enter into the New Testament, this theme takes center stage. If you're listening, if you see kind of things unfold, it's quite something. Luke chapter 2, very familiar passage, of course, as we come, particularly as you think about maybe Christmas season, incarnation. Luke chapter 2, when you think of righteous Simeon, Right there in the temple, waiting, serving the Lord, waiting for the consolation 
of Israel. He was waiting for the fulfillment of all of those promises. And in Luke chapter 2, verse 29 to 32, Simeon, in, in, just in a marvelous reality as you kind of think about all of these things unfolding, Simeon there, serving, patiently waiting in the temple, there he is holding the incarnate Son of God in his hands. He is holding El Shaddai in his hands. And he says this, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have now seen your salvation. Not just my ears, not just people talking about things, now my eyes have seen your salvation. I am beholding El Shaddai, the one who is all-sufficient. And he marvels. As he is holding in his hand El Shaddai. Is it any wonder as you think about Jesus and his ministry? the great fulfillment of these promises, we've, covenant promises we talk about. As we think about Jesus in his ministry, one of his, some of his favorite expressions, you just go through and you read the Gospels. And he makes declaration to all who would listen to him, follow me, come to me, abide in me, believe in me, trust in me, walk before me. And be blameless. Walk in me. Why? Because I am El Shaddai. I am God Almighty, all sufficient. You need nothing else. He is the all sufficient one who is not only able to bring us to a state of true blessing, but he himself is our blessedness in the flesh. We don't have to clean ourselves up first. We don't have to cry enough first. We don't have to do enough first. We come to him. We walk before him. We walk in him. And he gives us everything we need. We come here this morning into worship. And we have needs, undoubtedly. Do you need forgiveness? You know, are there things you are struggling with in your life that you just are ashamed of, you can't beat. Do you need forgiveness and cleansing? Christ Jesus is El Shaddai, he is all sufficient. He is almighty and we go to him. Do you need strength? Is there something that you need to do? You know you need to do it, it's a difficult thing that you need to do and you just can't. Do you need strength? Where do we go for that strength? We go to Christ. We go to El Shaddai. Do you need compassion and kindness? Do you need patience? Parents dealing with children. Is that what we need? Do we need these things? There is only one place we get that. And it is the one who declares himself to be El Shaddai. You get the idea. He is all-sufficient. He is almighty to give us all that we need. So as we contemplate these things, as we think about who it is that we come to worship, as we think about in whose name we come to worship, we go all the way back to Genesis chapter 17, all the, 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 those millennia of years And we hear with fresh ears, with more clarity than Abraham would have understood as we look at the Lord Jesus Christ, we hear this morning, God say to us, I am El Shaddai. Walk before me and be blameless. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our glorious God in heaven, we come. And we confess to you, O Lord, that so often we seek to be the ones to solve our own problems. 
we are so quick to do things on our own strength. We thank you and bless you, O Lord, for this glorious reminder that we serve El Shaddai, that we serve a God who is almighty, who can do his holy will, and who is sufficient in and of himself. O Lord, as we look afresh to the Lord Jesus Christ this morning, we pray that not just with our ears, but with the eyes of faith, that we would see fresh, in a fresh way, El Shaddai. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.